that nepotism is questionable, especially when it comes to the White House. But Trump has been a big fan of nepotism. He's put Ivanka Trump in the White House. He's put Jared Kushner in the White House. But just because someone's your family member doesn't necessarily mean that they're competent for the job. And Jared Kushner has shown time and time again that he is not competent when it comes to taking over his own family's businesses, primarily real estate issues. So he made a really bad decision right before the housing and and economic collapse in 2008. So um, there's new reporting on that and I want to share it with you guys. So uh, according to Vanity Fair, the most obvious example of Kushner's incompetence remains his decision to buy 666 Fifth Avenue on the eve of the financial crisis for what was then a record setting $1.8 billion, putting down a mere 50 million and borrowing the rest. The 1.2 billion loan of which Kushner family holds about half is due in February of 2019. Just to give you an idea of how poorly this was done and how much he owes and how they're not bringing enough bringing in enough money to pay the loan, let's do a little breakdown of the numbers. So the Midtown Manhattan office tower is on track to lose $24 million this year, marking the worst performance for 666 Fifth Avenue since the 2011 refinancing. The property had net operating income of 18.3 million for the six months ending in June. Debt payments were 30.4 million during that period. The tower's cash flow is enough to cover only about half of the debt payments on the building down from 66% last year. So every year it gets worse. Um, and yeah, doesn't know what he's doing. Okay, so there's lots of this uh, story that I love. Uh, so the apple doesn't fall far from the father-in-law. Uh, <laughs> so Donald Trump also a study of uh, incompetence in real estate. Um, and I know the, the right wing is like, what do you mean? He's a, bill he's a billionaire, he told me he has $10 billion. Let me see those tax returns. Uh, and remember, even in a best case scenario where he actually has like the three billion that he claims he originally claimed he had before he was running for president, and then all of a sudden moved it up to ten. <laughs> He's such an unbelievable ride. Anyway, if he had taken the money that he inherited from his dad, even at the low end of like I think it was like forty million is the low end, the high end is two hundred million. He would and just put it in the stock market in the index fund. Uh, it, he would have more now than what he claims he has. Okay, instead he bankrupted himself six times. His dad actually was a smart real estate man. By other accounts, a terrible person, okay, Fred Trump, Donald Trump's dad, but a smart businessman. Um, same thing with Kushner's dad, he went to prison, uh, but by most accounts, a smart businessman, minus the prison part. Okay, Jared comes in and he's like, don't worry, daddy, I got this, I got this. Ooh, I'm gonna buy a real big shiny building in New York, just like Donnie did. Okay, and that's what Donald Trump did. He would buy his dad built a fortune in Queens, mm -hmm. and he's like, oh, Queens, that's not sexy enough. I'm gonna go to Manhattan, I'm gonna buy some stuff in Manhattan. And bankruptcy, 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 right? Anyway. So Kushner goes and buys the most expensive building in New York because that's what bad business people do. They go buy shiny stuff, mm -hmm. and because they because they have to make up for their other issues, inadequacies. So they're like, oh yeah, I'm gonna have the biggest building in New York, Daddy. Yeah, but is it gonna make money? Exactly. Who right. cares if it's the biggest one or the most expensive one? I and thought smart businessmen create the shiny things. Oh, right? Yeah, yeah. I mean, that's what entrepreneurs are. They, you know, they come up with innovative ideas and they're the ones who build the shiny things. I don't know. Anyway. So he he's like, oh I got it, man. Real estate's going great. Okay. It's 2007. <laughs> it can't go down. So he buys the most expensive building in New York right before the crash because he's convinced it won't go down. Oh my God, what an idiot. Then he thinks he's clever because he only put 50 million down. Now, if the building is gonna go up, that could be clever. But you gotta be really careful because if you don't put that much down, the debt can kill you. Like any sensible business person would know that, especially in real estate. Mm -hmm. But he's like, oh, daddy, you're gonna buy the biggest building, daddy. I only put 50 million down. Oh, okay, but be careful, Jared. That might catch up with you later. Crash happens, he has to give away about 50% of the stake to Vornado, which is a, a well known real estate company. They come in like idiot, okay, for like a song, because he had no choice, otherwise they were gonna go completely bankrupt. So Vornado makes a smart move, although now they're stuck in this building too, but, but probably that'll work out okay for them because they got it for almost nothing because they bailed him out. So he's already given away half the farm, right? Now it's, 
the debt's catching up to him and he's like, oh, that's a problem. That's why he tried to, if you remember the story we did earlier, he tried to sell it to the Chinese for $400 million more than it was worth by any other real estate standards. Look, this real estate market is not like, hey, a shoe is $103 at Foot Locker and a hamburger is $1.99. It's a little bit more variable than that. It's whatever this, you can get for it, right? Yes, but but these are sophisticated investors sure. and they're gonna do due diligence, etc. And when the Chinese are overpaying by 400 <laughs> and Jared Kushner is in charge of our relationship with China mm -hmm. at the White House, that seemed a little fishy. And it was so fishy that the Chinese backed out. They're like, yeah, this, this looks really bad. Okay, even for us, this looks way too corrupt. So they're like, <laughs> ah, never mind, never mind. And they backed out and he's like, oh no. And that's the mess he's stuck in now. And one last thing now related back to policy, because remember, Jared is theoretically running that building and all the other real estate stuff that he's involved in, but he's also in charge of policy with China, peace in the Middle East, um, uh, solving the opioid crisis, uh, the government's IT infrastructure. Peace what? in the Middle East. What yeah. does he know about IT? Are you guys, this is so, and my favorite quote, reinventing the entire government. That's a direct quote. Yeah. That's what Jared Kushner is gonna do. God help us all. If, if <laughs> we made a mistake, if Anna made a mistake, or I made a mistake in real estate, or even Jank made a mistake in real estate, wouldn't it, happen. It, it could be <laughs> forgiven because we're not real estate people. You know, my dad wasn't a real estate mogul, uh, and I wasn't around real estate people to figure out the price per square foot and all the stuff that real estate people, that, that jargon that they speak. But the fact that this guy, is steeped in real estate and is sold to us as this genius in real estate. Well, here he is in his genius space and he's doing the least geniusy things that a person <laughs> can do. And then as Jenk says, I mean, he's tasked with all these other things. He is essentially king of the world. You know, we know where the president is. He's on a golf course or he's hanging out watching Fox and Friends. So Jared's kind of supposed to be doing a lot of this stuff. And the truth is, he is he's DOA as far as we as we know on on all these other issues. Look, he's DOA on his genius space. Yeah. Yeah, and remember so they said, "Oh, Jared's really smart." You know, he went to Harvard. You remember the story about how his dad bought him his Harvard space? They paid 2 million bucks to get both of his sons in. And so that's But you know, it's weird because we never have conversations about how that's not okay. Yeah. On college campuses. Like we'll have these ridiculous nonsensical discussions about how Minorities have the upper hand in college admissions, which is not true. But you know, when it comes to that kind of stuff, where Papa buys you admissions into prestigious universities, no one questions that. The whole thing's a ruse, man. So he, he he's never been bright. He's just like Donald Trump. He had everything handed to him. All he ever did was screw it up. His dad, Donald Trump's dad, got him out of Vietnam with a fake doctor's note about. Uh, a problem with a heel that Trump can't remember which heel it was. I yeah. mean, it's just gross. And then he bragged about how his own personal Vietnam was avoiding STDs at the orgies he was going to. And Jared Kushner gets handed his seat at Harvard, and then, uh, like, I don't know if he particularly is against affirmative action, but almost all the Republicans are, and they're like, ah, oh, these black kids getting. So, well, they didn't have two million dollars to buy the seat, okay? Mm -hmm. uh, and then he gets handed billions of dollars in transactions, at least, right? He had to put the fifty million in, but. And he screws that up royally, now they're on the hook and it might bankrupt the entire family, which would be awesome. <laughs> Just while you're at it, please don't bankrupt the rest of us. It's funny and fun when you bankrupt yourself, okay? But when you're trying to reinvent the entire government, please find some professionals who can help you because you're not that bright. If you like this clip of the Young Turks, you know there's a whole live two hour show, 6 to 8 p.m. Eastern every day. And you can download it or stream it and watch it without ads if you become a member. TYTnetwork.com slash join.